This episode brought to you by MeepleRealty.com, your source for high-quality custom board game inserts. Meeple Realty, think inside the box. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're bringing you our top 20 in 20 minutes, most played games of all time. Now in the past I've done top 20s or top 15s, top 10s, and, and just done them, but those take a good chunk of time and instead you've got things to do. You have busy schedules, so let's get these top 20 games knocked out in one video in 20 minutes. Now this is going to be the most played games based on number of actual plays. In the fall I do one based on number of total hours played and that's a significantly different list but for now we're doing the most played games and this goes through December 31st 2017. I, I stopped counting there I always count at the end of the year and uh, it starts somewhere around June of 2014, somewhere in there was when I started counting my plays. I, I've been playing since 2012, since the end of 2012, but not nearly as much as I was by the point, by the time that June rolled around of 2014. So there's a little bit of uh, some games that are missing, but not a whole lot. The main ones that might have really suffered here would be Small World, Mansions of Madness First Edition, and Wrath of a Shardalon were the main ones that are, are really miss, missing some plays here. But that's enough backstory on this. Let's get right into the list. Top 20 in 20 minutes starts now. First up, number 20, we've got Lord of the Rings, the card game, the living card game. This has 14 plays. Last year's plays were, uh, it was also 14 plays because I don't even own this game anymore. This was a game that when I initially got it, I liked it a lot. I, I loved the theme. I liked what it was doing. I liked the different factions and the, all the different heroes and, and the different cards. But what I really didn't like about it, and I guess it's really on me for just not really knowing what I was getting into, is that in this particular living card game, it really felt pay to play because you the, the base game is so difficult, so difficult on regular difficulty that is is just on this side of impossible to actually beat the game without buying some expansions. So I, I just wasn't into that. So I went ahead and I got rid of that one, traded it away, but it is still on the list. Last year, you know, it was, it was on the list too, but it's slipping off. It's getting close to falling off. Not quite there. Number 20, Lord of the Rings, the card game. Number 19 is King Domino with... 15 plays now it is new to the list uh, and this is a, a little game you've got domino shaped pieces that on one side has a number on the other side has two different sections and just like a domino and uh, there's different terrains there's like a, a swamp and lake or, or water or something and fields forests and you're trying to group all of the different terrains together in order to get the biggest area of that particular terrain possible to score points at the end of the game. You get extra points for having a perfect square and all that kind of stuff. Plays up to four players, as few as two. When you play with two players, you can really have a really big map because you get to use all of the tiles and that's that's pretty cool. It's a fun family weight game. The My kid loves it, the, or my oldest. The other two are too young to play. And my wife really enjoys playing as well. That's King Domino. Number 18 is Kingdom Death Monster coming in with 16 plays. Also new to the list. This is one that I anticipate really rising very high on this list. Kingdom Death Monster is a game where you have a settlement in this absolute devastating hellscape of who knows what this place is constant darkness no sunlight the only source of light are these lantern looking things that uh, the survivors or what they're called they carry them around and the survivors carry these lanterns around and they have to go out and hunt for their food but the monsters that they're hunting are insanely vicious and, and you're just as likely to walk come away from the hunt dead as you are to actually uh, kill what you're looking for and then there's these nemesis encounters where these guys will show up at your settlement and basically uh, when you come out to try to go hunting instead they attack you and you have to fend them off as well incredibly brutal game so the survivors are just constantly dying and you're trying you're just trying to turn out 
uh, you know, more survivors and gather more survivors and do what you can to survive in this brutal, brutal game. And number 17 is Hive. Now, this is one that I have not played very much recently. It's new to the list only because the list didn't go down to 20 last year. The list only went to either 15 or 10 last year. And so Hive is a real, very portable game. It's got these ceramic uh, hex tiles that each have a different bug on them. And it's two players. And it's kind of like, imagine chess, but without a board. And, and the, the movements are different than chess and all that. But that's a general idea because each player is trying to capture the, the queen bee of the other player. And you've got spiders and ants and grasshoppers and beetles, I believe, as well. And, and so you're maneuvering all your pieces around and the board just kind of takes shape in front of you because the pieces are the board. And like I said, very portable, very durable, fun little two-player game, Hive. Number, n number, number 16, Forbidden Island, also with 17 plays. Last year, it only had 16 plays, so only got one more play this year. But Forbidden Island is one that is still good to, that, that I can easily pull out with other players, other people, and that aren't normally gamers. And this is another one where the, the tiles are the board. You set them out in a random order, and you're trying to collect these uh, treasures because it belongs in a museum. And you're trying to, I, I assume that's what you're going to take them, where you're going to take them. And you're trying to collect these treasures and then get off the island before the island sinks into the ground, in, into the ground, into the ocean. And as it's sinking, you're trying to shore it back up and get, you know, get the water back off of it, but it starts sinking at a rap more rapid and more rapid rate. And eventually, if you don't get that stuff and get off the island, it is uh, game over. And it has many of the same uh, me mechanisms as Pandemic, which you may or may not see later on the list. That is Forbidden Island. Number 15 is Rampage, which is now known as Terror in Meeple City. This has 19 plays. Last year had 17 plays. Another one that, you know, isn't getting quite as much play as it used to, but this is a dexterity game where you actually build a city up where the buildings are held up by meeples and they're like uh, four stories tall, I believe. And you have a monster that each player, you flick the monster's paws to move it on the board. And then when you get next to a building, you can drop the monster on top of the building and the, the building explodes and the meeples go everywhere. And you hope they don't go off the board because if they do, they're runaway meeples and penalties can be levied against players who knock meeples off the board. And then you're gonna eat the meeples and at the end of the game, based on various scoring mechanisms, you, whoever has the most points wins. And that's all based off of what that monster managed to eat during the game. That You eat the buildings, you eat the meeples, and you also attack the other monsters and knock their teeth out. It's a fun game, great family weight game. My daughter loves it. It's a good, uh, a good game for all ages, really. Number 14 is Mage Knight with 20 plays. Now, last year it had 15 plays, so I got five plays in. This is one that uh, has it's still very, very high up there as far as my all-time favorite games. It's taken a bit of a back burner just because my collection has kind of exploded this year and I've really gotten a lot more games in here. I need to get Mage Knight back to the table real soon. This is a massive game where uh, you are, there's lots of different missions you can do, but essentially in every mission, you're gonna be drawing tiles off the top of this uh, tile stack and exploring. You run into monsters and there's mines where you can gather crystals and in the daytime, spells work differently than they do at nighttime and uh, generally more powerful at night, but oftentimes uh, more difficult to pull off as well. And then you have artifacts and there's a, a morale tracker. Uh, is it a morale or I'm not sure if it's more. What, what, what is it? Anyway, point is there's a tracker with uh, that, that gauges how the, the general public views you. And, and, you know, if you're too if you're too evil, then they'll end up. Uh, not working with you as well, and I'm going over my time here. I love that I could, one minute is not enough time to talk about Mage Knight. It is a fantastic game. Check it out, great for one player. So after Mage Knight, number 13 is Mechs versus Minions. This is another one that's really fun with one player, but really shines with four players. Uh, Mechs versus Minions with 22 plays, had 17 last year. Mechs versus Minions is uh, by uh, the people who make League of Legends, and you have four pre-painted minis that come in the game where and it's a programming game so you are going around the board and just laying waste to all these minions that there's literally a hundred minions come in the box and they come at you at wave after wave each mission uh, it's, a, it's a campaign and each mission has different objectives and uh the, the it's just crazy wacky fun with how the programming works and 
you know, I hear a lot of people say that because it's a cooperative game, when something goes wrong with your programming, it's not as infuriating as it would be in a competitive game because it's more hilarious things happen, you know, hijinks and all that stuff. So that's Mechs vs. Minions, my number 13. Number 12 is Seven Wonders Duel with 23 plays. Last year it had 18. This is a great, great two-player game. I have the expansion as well, which I really enjoy. It took the Seven Wonders idea, the Seven Wonders theme, broke it down into a two-player game that's actually worthwhile, and uh, it set up, uh, you know, it, it solved the drafting issue where instead of passing cards back and forth, the cards are laid out on a table and half of them are face down, and based on which cards you pick, the face down ones will turn face up, and so then you can see what they are as well. And in the end, it has a couple of instant win uh, objectives that we, we're using either science or military. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. Fantastic two-player game. I highly recommend checking this one out. Number 11 is Friday. Coming at number 11 and new to the list with 24 plays. This is a solo-only game from uh, uh, Friedman Fries. And this is basically uh, You Are Friday from the Robinson Crusoe novels, stories. And Robinson Crusoe has crash-landed on the island like he does. And you have to help him survive because he is a just really not intelligent person, apparently. And uh, and he just has all kinds of problems. And so it's a deck building game. And so at the beginning, obviously, you're going to have some bad cards in your hand. And so you're going to try to get rid of those cards. But here's the interesting thing. Every time your deck runs out and you have to reshuffle it, you take a card from what's called the aging deck and shove it in there as well. And that's a really bad card that gets thrown in there. And so there's ways you can, you know, purge your deck. And this, this game actually has one of the most enjoyable things as far as as far as purging the deck goes because it's very easy to do so. It, it is, you don't have to wait for certain cards. It's very easy to do so, but you're sacrificing health to do it. So that's a very easy, interesting choice it really lends itself to some interesting decisions during the game number 10 is star wars imperial assault with 24 plays last time it had 17 plays this one i almost got rid of it i really did i didn't think the app was ever going to come out but i waited and waited and waited and the app finally came out and it is back in the spotlight for me this is the only game right now that really is doing a good job of competing with kingdom death and uh, gloomhaven for my attention uh, with, with the app, it just brings so much more life back into the game. It, it is now fully cooperative or soloable, and both of those are very intriguing to me instead of it being the one versus many, because that one versus many campaign, I'm sorry, it really does have a runaway leader problem, and I just couldn't get anybody to really get into the skirmish missions with me, because I really, I really did like the skirmish. So that left me with nothing to do with it. Until now, the app's out. It's great. Check it out. After Star Wars, we have number nine, Love Letter, with 25 plays. Uh, and specifically, Love Letter Batman is the one that I play. It had 21 plays the year before. This game, you can knock out. And when I say a play, this is the full uh, win seven times, you know, in order to, for it to count as a play. This, uh, so uh, one of the original, uh, was it not miniature games? Not miniature, uh Micro games, I guess. It has, what, like uh, only a few cards. It's got like 14 cards or something like that in the game. And you uh, hand them out, and you know, hand one card out at a time to each player, and then you draw one and you pick one to play, and that's it. It's got the Batman theme on top of it. It works so well, the Batman theme does. And this is one that we really like to use to end or begin a game night. I'll probably be taking it to my game night on Friday, get a few more plays of it in. That's Love Letter Batman, my number nine. Number eight is Magic Maze coming in. This is the highest new game on the list with 27 plays. Magic Maze has really taken my family by storm. We really, it can be super frustrating because we are definitely a talkative bunch and the game's rules don't let you talk. You are not allowed to talk during the game except for in very specific moments. It's a, uh, a simultaneous play game. Everybody, but nobody is in charge of a particular character on the board. Instead, you're in charge of moving certain direction or certain actions. And because of that, it really uh, makes you adjust the way you think about everything because so often we get focused in on a particular character, but instead, 
you, you know, in most games, you know, you have your character, but in this one, it's not like that. Everybody's sharing all the characters, and you can't talk, and you're trying to get to the objective point where you're going to steal your merchandise, and then you got to get everybody to the exit points, and everybody has different merchandise and different exit points, and it is frantic, hilarious fun that's also incredibly frustrating sometimes. That's Magic Maze, my number eight. Number seven, Thunderstone Advance with 28 plays, had 24 the previous year. I don't know what's going to happen to Thunderstone Advance when Thunderstone Quest gets here, because I am going to have to get Thunderstone Quest because I love Advance so much that I feel like i got to try Quest. Thunderstone Quest will be out later this year, but Thunderstone Advance is a deck builder. Uh, from I've never played Dominion, but from what I understand, this is one of the first, one, first big ones to really come out after Dominion, and it added a combat mechanism. You're going into dungeons and clearing out dungeons and, and uh, going to the village and buying more cards and hiring more heroes, upgrading your heroes, all that kind of stuff, and then going back to the dungeon again and fighting more monsters, getting more experience, and upgrading your heroes again. And at the end of the game, whichever player has the most victory points wins. And it's kind of interesting that even if the bad guy escapes, it's not technically a loss because he's still whoever has the most victory points. This was the game that got that that my game group that I told you about on Friday, that I'm going to on Friday, it was really the core of that group. This is what created that group was me teaching non-gamers Thunderstone Advance, and now we play all kinds of games. Uh, after that, we have number six, P Pandemic Legacy Season 1, 29 plays this year, 19 plays last year. So last year, I had uh, completed Pandemic Legacy, and now I, and I believe I had already started, let's see, I had completed it. Anyway, um, now we're playing again. We're playing again, and this time it's with a different group. I'm playing with my, my game group instead of with my wife, and we are loving it again. I stay out of most of the decisions. I'll kind of nudge people certain ways, but as I watch, I see them doing certain things that are going to kill us in a couple of missions. It's going to be really bad, but it's so cool to watch it happen. Uh, love this game. Pandemic Legacy is an experience almost unlike any other out there. Number five, Sushi Go with 31 plays, 23 the previous year. This one is still seeing a lot of play time. Sushi Go is such a fast, fun game that is easy to teach. I've taught it to so many people, and my, <laughs> but when my wife and daughter and I play this, it's like you know we're just boom, 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 so fast that we have to slow ourselves down when new people come in because we, are, you know, we'll we'll just go through the three rounds like you wouldn't believe. This is a a drafting game where all the cards are sushi and you're trying to you know you, you match the uh, the uh, what's the green stuff you know the hot green stuff I can't think I'm going too fast here uh, doesn't matter the hot green stuff you match that up with a certain sushi and it, and it multiplies your points or you get lots of dumplings and every dumpling increases the number of points exponentially type thing I don't know if exponentially is the right word there either point is so many cool things, and I'm sure you've seen the cute artwork all around me. Sushi Go is my number five most played game of all time. Number four, it four four is Dead of Winter with 35 plays. Only had or had 34 the year the year before that, so only played it one time this past year. This one has fallen off a little bit. I, I'm not sure why. I think maybe it's because you know I said Thunderstone Advance was the game that created my one game group. Well, Dead of Winter became the obsession of that game group and we just played the holy hell out of it. I really want another crossword game to come out, another cross crossroads game to come out because that crossroads mechanism in Dead of Winter is so fantastic. Still like this game, I want to introduce it to new people. Every time I introduce it to somebody, they love it. So I mean, it, it, it still it will always have a place in my collection. It, it just, uh, I guess, I've moved to some other games that, that I haven't played quite as much is what's going on with it, but I'd still love to get to the table more. Number three is Splendor with 45 plays this year, had 40 plays the year before that. Obviously slowed down quite a bit on this one, however, this is my wife's favorite game still. We do get at the table pretty frequently, and uh, it is a it has a theme that is pointless. And basically, you it, it, you it's an engine building game. You're you're going and collecting these cards 
that will then give you points and will also make it easier to collect more cards that will give you more points but and also give make it easier to collect even more powerful cards and that's really the cycle that you go through here and that's what you're building when you're playing a game you play to 15 points and knock it out in about 20 30 minutes unless you've got some serious ap i think we play usually 20 20 minutes is usually how fast we go with this game has some really cool poker chips that i unfortunately have heard have taken a dive in quality in the latest printings that's really unfortunate i have one of the earlier printings where they have real hefty nice poker chips number two pandemic with 52 plays 50 the year before that so if you really think about it between pandemic and pandemic legacy we've got uh 70 81 plays between those two games now that's a lot of pandemic so pandemic with 52 plays the reason why pandemic doesn't get played nearly as much is because pandemic legacy has kind of ruined it for us we love pandemic legacy so much and going back to vanilla pandemic it has become a game that we bring out just to play with people that don't play games a lot is what pandemic is now but it's still so much fun going around the globe you know trying to stop the diseases from from spreading I have Pandemic and I have the Into the Lab expansion. So, you know, those are the, the different people that I have, the different characters that I have available to me. And it is a lot of fun, classic game that will always be around. Pandemic number two. And number one is Star Realms with 60 plays, 57 the previous year. So yet again, another one that has slowed down, but it is still very solidly in the lead with that 60 play mark. Star Realms, two player game. Uh, card drafting game or I'm oh, sorry deck building game you do buy cards from a central location that both players have access to deck building game and you're basically just firing shots back and forth back and forth you heal and you fire shots you heal and you fire shots until you manage to knock someone all the way down my favorite faction of this is the yellow faction the star empire i think they're called because they make your opponent discard cards and when i really get that going when i really get a nice little uh engine going and really whittle my deck down i can keep uh my wife having only about two cards in her hand at any given time and it drives her absolutely crazy but that is my number one star realms with 60 plays most played game of all time and that is time right there all right Woo! we did it i can't believe i made it through all 20 i hope that camera's still recording i'll be so upset if it's not y'all if you enjoy this video Thank you so much. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. If you want to support the channel, you can buy t-shirts from Geeky Goodies. Links in the description below. If you like any of the games you saw, there's links in the description below for you to purchase those. You can go over to my Pod Pledge page and support the channel there. Lots of ways to support the channel if you want. If you don't, just please keep watching. We love having you. Thank you so much. This has been the top 20 most played games of all time. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.